Well, g'day everyone and welcome back to another episode. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Mark Brain and I'm back on my project boat, the Haynes Hunter 600R. Today I'm gonna to focus on uh, the transom. So I've fared it all in. As you can see, I've got uh, a little bit of uh, 3M bog there. In amongst that is my fairing compound, which I made out of cabasil uh, and uh, flow coat. So uh, that's where we're at. I've had a guide coat on there. Everything's looking Mickey Mouse. I'm just making the finishing touches to these patches of, of uh, the 3M uh, bog that I've put on there. And I'm basically gonna get this transom prepped for to spray some gel coat down. Now the intention is to two pack the top deck of this boat and gel coat the transom and the sides. The underside's already been done. So what we're gonna do is bring the white from the underside, the polar white, uh, up where the original white line was, I don't know if you can see it, but it's basically from outside of China to outside of China, straight line across here. And then from there up, we're gonna have storm gray. So white bottom, storm gray sides, and then polar white type top deck as well. Now, uh, to do this, I'm gonna to have to wrap the uh, gel coat under. So I'm gonna prep everything uh, first, get it all sanded, get it all taped up, and basically get this ready for some, uh, to spray some gel coat. Now, some of you might think, oh, gel coat, you can't spray it out of, you know, outside of a mold. Well, yes, you can. Uh, the, the process is fairly simple. Spraying um, two to three coats of unwaxed gel coat, which gel coat is obviously unwaxed, but spraying gel coat down, and then a final layer of uh, waxed gel coat or um, flow coat, you could say. And that's gonna seal it off and allow it to cure properly. Then from there, you'll, you'll have to sand it down, like I did on the underside of the boat. Um, but I'm pretty confident the outside's gonna be a little bit more easier to sand. Um, all right, so I'm gonna keep sanding here, prepping this board, uh, well, the transom, I should say. And then we'll uh, work our way uh, to masking up the underside of the boat where it's already been done. I'll have to etch that surface a little bit where it's already smooth on the other side. And uh, we will... Uh, prep that for uh, spraying and bonding, and I'll just do a few tiny little touch-ups before we get stuck into it. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to finally getting some product down on the boat. Let's get into it. Before I get stuck into spraying some gel coat and masking this transom up, what I want to do is just show you uh, the boat and what we've done since our last episode because there's actually a lot, a lot of work going into it. I've employed the services of my uh, old man and he's jumped in and uh, he uh, has done a lot of fairing and uh, yeah, filling and sanding for me and he's made a few things come up really schmick. Um, so what we've tried to do, as I said before, is get everything as close as we can with the bearing compound and then just finish with a little bit of uh, 3M um, filler, body filler. Now it, it is a, a product that is uh, allowed to be used on fiberglass, so it, uh, it bonds quite well. As you can see down the side of the bow where Dad's done all this great work along there, it's tied in beautifully. Look at that lovely join in there and where the the angles and the transition change, it just continues the lovely lines of this boat that it originally had. And it's just coming up a tree. We've, we've brought that uh, the breaker down into there nicely. That still needs a little bit of touching up, but at the moment, I'm not focusing on the top deck. Uh, so when I talk about the top deck, I'm talking about where the, where the original split in the hull was. It was uh, a two-part mold. So you've got your top deck mold and your hull mold. Now, I've done, um, 
Basically, all the work below the top deck is gonna be gel coat, and anything above that is gonna be a two-pack. Now, the reason for that is because you've got all these little tiny lines and angle changes and all these little places that's gonna to have to be sanded when, if I spray gel coat on it. Now, the reason I don't wanna spray gel coat there is basically because it's too much sanding and and it's too hard to sand through or so, should i say too easy to sand through on them little joins um with my experience with gel coats so uh rather than uh do the sanding after spraying we'll get it all mickey mouse bang on and then we'll just two pack it and be done with it i do want to have a black wave breaker so it's going to be white to black so you're going to get that nice de definition of that wave breaker it's going to look really good so uh on the underside here what i've done is sanded this back with a 40 grit uh sandpaper and um brought it back to the original gel coat now it's gonna be ready um for preparation very very shortly hence why i'm doing the little white section at the back of the boat because i want that done first so i can sand it down and get that line that's going to be across the back there right on point and looking schmick we've done uh the transom well section it's all come up flat and perfect um down in here needs a little bit more attention but this is mainly going to be flow coat in here with a speckle and that flow coat speckle is going to wrap around the transom like this so you're not going to have too much of an issue with those joins there it's more these lines through here which are bang on we've absolutely done a schmick job of rolling them over all the way through here all the way across there this has been out of a mold, so that's pretty good. Across here, all these joins come up Mickey Mouse. Jump up in the dash. So the dash is all sand flat already. The wave break is pretty much there. We've just got a few little sections to uh, put a bit of body filler on just to tidy up some edges there. Now the reason we don't use body filler the whole time is because the fairing compound we've been making from Cabasil and Flow Coat is a lot stronger. Uh, it's a lot harder to sand though, so if you're just fine tuning, you want to just use the body filler for small amounts because it's not going to crack away. Uh, but uh, the difference is with the fairing compound is really really hard to sand compared to to the bog, and but also it takes minimum 12 hours for it to cure properly before you can sand it where the bog you can be sanding in 15 20 minutes which is handy if you just want to keep fine tuning areas and uh, stay on top of things um yeah we've uh dad has fared in the front hatch pretty well it needs a little bit more attention but you can see he's done that all with bog that one so um it's got some beautiful lines um with angle changes and things so what we're going to do on the top deck also is a high fill primer so but first we'll probably i'm going to speak to the guys at the paint shop so i've never done this before but we're going to probably do an epoxy uh primer which is going to give us a really good bond to this to the top deck and then we'll use a high build primer which is going to um basically build up a sandable layer an easy sandable layer which will then put a guide coat over and uh sand it all back down and get it all looking mickey mouse you can't however do that with the gel coat because the gel coat doesn't want to stick to any epoxy products uh it, it, you can make it stick but it's uh it's a huge gamble for someone like me and uh i'm just uh not willing to take that risk so i'm just going to spray gel down and then sand it flat afterwards on the on the hull itself all right i'm going to start masking this transom up and getting it ready for um spraying let's go
Alrighty, so after prepping that surface with a, just a light sand again, the last sand I did was 60 grit, so that's more than enough uh, for, to uh, get a mechanical bond there with the gel coat back onto the fiberglass, the gel coat, the fairing compound, and the bog. That's what we're bonding to there. Uh, so I've got my old spray gun out. It's got a three mil nozzle on it. I've given it a test with a bit of uh, acetone through it. It's still spraying all right. But what I'm doing now is just going to put... Um, about 300 mil through it. I'm going to test it on a bit of board outside just to make sure it's going to work. So I've got my gel coat and I'm mixing that up now. I'm mixing it at a 5% um, ratio with styrene uh, monomer, which is uh, what I'm using to thin it, so to put it through the gun. What I have got is brush gel coat, so it does need some thinning. Um, for the sides in the Storm Grey, I actually have spray gel coat. I do need to confirm whether that still needs some thinning or not, but um, given that it's spray gel coat, I assume not, but you never know. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to mix this in, and then I'm going to catalyze it 1.5% 1, 1 uh, just to be uh, on a little bit of the safe side, make sure it doesn't go off too quick, but also we do want to make sure it goes off because it's only going on in a reasonably thin layer. Um, that is half the key to is getting enough on there for it to um, have that thermal reaction and set off the um, start that chemical reaction which brings the heat into it and actually sets off your gel coat now remember this is an unwaxed layer of gel coat so the first layer unwaxed um, and the reason for that is so we don't have to sand between coats we're going to be able to put multiple layers on all right I'll uh, mix some uh, catalyst into this now and uh, we'll get in the gun Well guys, the camera just went dead right at the wrong time, but I flicked on the old iPhone. And as you can see, that really, really happy with that line all the way along there. It's just perfect. There's a couple of little blemishes in here and there, but that's fine, it all gets sanded down. You can see that orange peel effect through there. Now, that's why people think you can't spray it off the gun, but you can, you've just got to sand it down. Now. Um, I did finish, I did four coats, so three coats of unwaxed and then one and a half sort of coats with a wax. I did a real thick layer over the top. I'm really happy with my thickness. I can see that the whole way through there. It's very even the whole way along, which is brilliant. The only thing I'm not happy about, and it's probably because I put a bit too much on it one time without letting it cure, is the corners here. We'll sand those down, see how they look. If it blows through, we'll just have to apply a little bit more by brush or or roll it on and we'll just sand that back down so that should be fine i'm really happy with how it all come up though um it's a great test uh patch to do before we start doing the sides of the boat now uh one thing i would mention is that that air compressor is probably not keeping up as much as it should so what i will do is 
Let me spin that around. What I will do is when I'm spraying, I'll get another compressor, join them together, and run them that way. All right, we'll let this cure overnight, come back, and uh, we'll have a little bit of a sand in the morning, and I'll show you how to bring it up. Uh, going through the grades, I might just do a little test patch just to show you guys. All right, happy days. Right, well, we're back. And I'm rather happy with how that has come out. That line along there is just perfect. What I'm not sure about doing, I don't know if I should sand this down first before applying the gray above it. Or do I apply the gray and then sand them down together to try and get this line along here perfect. I'm happy with where the white's sitting along the line. It looks perfect. But it's just when you sand down through the grades, whether it's because material's got to come off. If we put gray over the top of that, is that going to work? I don't know. Do we sand down and then just mask up to that line? I think that's what I'm going to try first. So I think, yeah, I'll, I'll probably sand this down, show you the process of uh, how we're gonna sand that, and then from there, we'll uh, go to applying the gray coat. Probably not gonna do the gray coat um, as an episode, I'm just showing you in this one how uh, gel coat is applied with the spray gun and how to sand it down and get it looking schmick. And then what I'll do is uh, probably just off camera finish the sides of the boat, and then we'll move into a, the two pack and the preparation to the two pack on the top deck, so. All right. I'm gonna grab a little Makita sander and some, we'll start with the 400 grit, wet and dry, and there, start ripping it down. Let's go. Alrighty guys, well I ended up, uh, I ended up starting with the, uh, the P320 in a uh, wet and dry, and as you can see I've been using a little uh, Makita sander there. Um, it's going pretty well, the, um, the sanding paper doesn't last too long before it tends to gunk up and uh, starts to lose its effectiveness, so the first few minutes of using it is certainly uh, the best. Now, um, so starting with the 320, and then uh, I did start with 400, however, wasn't taken enough off. And uh, it's good because I can see this little lip here. I can actually see the height of my gel coat. So I know how much I'm sanding down and if I'm getting too low and I've barely even grazed the surface. But I don't know if the camera is gonna pick this up, but we've still got some little dimpling here and there, but it's certainly starting to smooth and off and become a flat surface. More so on this side, because I've worked a little bit harder on this side. That curve down there is looking really good. And uh, I'm just getting prepared to drop to the 400, I think. Maybe one more pass on this side with 320 if I've got some there. And then uh, we'll drop to 400. Give it a good run over with 400, take a little bit more off and try and uh, get all those dimples out with that. And then we'll go 600, 800, 1200. And then uh, see where we're at with 1200. If we're gonna go any more, we'll go some more. And then uh, a cut and polish will certainly bring it up like new. So let's keep going at it.
Well, folks, I just finished uh, the final sand with the, uh, I was using 1500 grit uh, um, wet and dry there. So with the grades, I ended up starting out with a 320. I did a 400 over that. Now the 320 was probably the most aggressive, most time spent on that. 400, a fair bit over the top of that. I skipped 600 because I just didn't have any and couldn't get any today, unfortunately. Straight to 800, and then I've gone down uh, to uh, the 1200 for a little bit, and then just a quick finish off with the 1500. Um, this little Makita um, sander, it's been working fantastic today. Really enjoyed uh, using that today. Um, certainly for flat surfaces like this, this is gonna be great. Now, I'm really happy with the finish I got here. It's uh, come up beautifully. There's, there's a few little tiny blemishes here and there, but it's, it's pretty damn good for a, for a backyard boat builder. I'm certainly happy with the result. Now, uh, moving forward from here, all this needs is really a cut and polish. Now, I would recommend a nice heavy cutting compound um, really get stuck into this and, and really bring that shine out in it. 1500, you probably can get away with finishing on 1200. I can't even remember what I was doing on the bottom of the hull before. That has just come up absolutely Mickey Mouse with the water on it. Um, it obviously hides a little bit with the water, but when that dries off, you can just see how shiny it is. It's already beading off like it's got that waxed look. And uh, obviously once we cut and polish and wax it, it'll just look a million bucks. I'm really, really impressed. Now, moving forward, obviously this was a really good test patch to do, uh, to work out now my sides and the, the back of the transom here to do in the, uh, in the storm gray. So I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, look guys, I'm probably gonna skip that for an episode because I've shown you how this works. And uh, realistically, I wanna focus on getting this boat 100% with the gel coat on the sides. So rather than try and film and do all that as well, I'm gonna probably skip that one. But you're gonna get the gist of it here. And uh, as always guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate all the support from you guys. Thanks for sticking around on the show. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, if you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Notification bell's up there if you uh, wanna get notified when we post content. And yeah, until next time guys, stay safe out there and uh, hopefully I'll have another video, video coming your way very shortly. Thanks guys, see ya.